piece is no joke. No, that piece is uh, piece of good warm up, right? Let's do the battle. We can sneak that one in. Battle? Ghost thing? Das battle. It's under B. B A. As in battle. Battle. Watch the key change. Okay. Key change at B. Gets a tiny bit slower there. Horns in the lead at B. Beats are good. I want to punish myself.
number two, you do the repeats, then you do the repeats, then you go back to the beginning and play it straight down, no repeats. Got it. As it says.
Yes. Is there a name? Occasional, Occasional brass. brass. Occasional brass. Yes. Occasional brass. I, am. I played uh, a lot of uh, brass music like your five point trumpet. We just moved here, so I'd like to offer myself if you need a fill in sometime. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I played at Washington University in St. Louis. Okay, great. Been around here for a long time? Yeah. I grew up here and then we've been doing so occasional brass has been around in various incarnations since about 2001. So, yeah, that's a long time. Yeah. And then I heard this all of a sudden. I just walked in and I said, <laughs> wait a minute. I told my family, I got, a, I got a grandson who's graduating. So. Nice. Is that, Congratulations. Is that, I'll meet you in a few minutes and I got something more important to talk about. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> nice. That's great. Well, it sounds great. Guys. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice to meet you. Good to meet you. All right. Keep up the door. Thank you. When I said bye, I took that. I didn't Not mean that, you know. Not a thing. Yeah. 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 Actually, let's do Banco. Banco Sangalita. Yeah, under B. D Banco Sangalita. Oh, you do it. It's under B. That's what you were thinking, Algado, right? What? When you said wake them up? You oh. were thinking Algado, weren't you? Okay. I do, I do want to do that. Start with the Same. second, <laughs> the second one. Four odds. Four odds. We're just going to do the second and the fourth. Oh, sweet down. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Except my chops are tight, we must be on the stand. One, two, one, two. <laughs> Thank you. 
the peas. Number four. Have fun on this one, Rick. Welcome, if you could please take your seats. Welcome, if you could please take your seats. Thank you.
welcome to the GAN Academy commencement for the class of 2018. Please rise for the singing of the national anthems for the United States and Israel. So proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous sight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red. now deliver the invocation. Welcome everyone to the commencement ceremony for the GAN Academy Class of 2018. Dedication and drive two words that describe the way in which everyone in our grade approaches their unique passions. Throughout the last four years, I've observed our shared ability to discover our personal interests and generatively pursue them. When discussing this connecting thread with Rabbi Komisar, he pointed me to a quote by Rabbi Shalom Brzovsky, a Hasidic rabbi born in the early 1900s to a granddaughter of Hillel, who discusses this wonderful discovering of one true mission. Rabbi Brzovsky wrote in Nitivot Shalom, Berosh kol ha'adam chayav lehitzbonen heitev v'lachkor v'ladat ma'i chovato ha'miyuchadet v'lamo. Ma'hu ha'inyan ha'miyuchad shebishvilo yared la'olam. Before every, anything else, a person is obligated to reflect upon and search out what is their unique mission, for the sake of which they descended to this world. Rabbi Brzovsky's quote highlights the importance of each person reflecting, then searching, for their unique mission, which in the long run will benefit the health of the society. His use of the verbs lachkor and ladat to reflect 
and to investigate or know. Demonstrate the two-pronged nature of finding one's passion. First, one must reflect, lachkor, and consider what activities are best suited to a person's strengths and desires. I've been incredibly impressed by the way in which each person in our grade has carefully considered how they would like to spend their time. Whether that is lifting weights, doing robotics, volunteering with kids, or strength strengthening friendships. I've seen my fellow students try out new activities, all with the purpose of finding the most personally fulfilling way to spend their time. Which leads me to the second verb, la dat, to investigate or know. Our grade has not just reflected, but it has actively pursued the passions we spent time discovering. GAN has benefited greatly from our ability to stay committed to our passions because it has led students to create engaging art performances, new clubs like Conservative Club or NCSY Club, and stronger connections between grades through spaces like Women's Minion. The focus we have placed on realizing our passions throughout the school demonstrates Rabbi Brzozowski's wisdom. When people take time to reflect on, implement, and stay committed to their passions, the entire community benefits. I don't think the class of 2018 has been par of in its pursuits. That is to say, we are neither ambivalent nor accept our classmates' passions as our own. Rather, I think that students have jumped into new topics and activities head on, open to new learning and social interactions. As Rabbi Brzozowski indicates with his use of two verbs, it takes some level of research and consideration before a person knows what they want to do and what their priorities are. Thanks to their own research and pursuits, some have a clear understanding of how they would like to spend their time in the future. Others do not, but I believe that through instinctively following Rabbi Brzozowski's words, our whole grade will continue to know ourselves. Thus, my blessing for our class is that we will all continue to contemplate what excites us, be flexible enough to try new ways of spending our time, and eventually go out and pursue our unique missions. Congratulations on reaching this point, Mazal Tov. Please welcome Mr. Frank Litwin, President of the Board of Trustees. Welcome to GAN Academy's 19th commencement ceremony for the class of 2018. My name is Frank Litwin, and I am honored to be the president of the GAN Board of Trustees. We are all here to celebrate you, the class of 2018, our remarkable students, as you complete your GAN education and step out into the world. We are also here to congratulate and say mazel tov to the parents of the class of 2018. For me, as one of the parents of this class, it has been a privilege and an honor to be on this journey with you. I want to speak for a moment about GAN and the special place that it occupies for our families and in our community. GAN will open its doors to students for the 22nd year this fall. Our school has never been stronger. GAN is well positioned to thrive and continue to grow as we move through this exciting leadership transition period. We are so proud of our beloved head of school, Rabbi Mark Baker, as he moves on to become the president of CJP. The board has engaged Dr. Jerry Katz as the interim head of school, and the search process for the replacement permanent head of school is well underway. So this begs the question, in this time of challenge, why is GAN so strong and healthy? Why has GAN been able to foster such a caring, dynamic, and innovative culture that enables us to grow and change with bold strategic vision while remaining true to our roots? A deeply held belief that an excellent high school education grounded in Jewish values and Jewish education produces students who are ready to change the world. Our Jewish communities and our society writ large need more of this. 
My answer is that this is about the people, the human capital, the collective efforts of so many groups who helped make GAN the special place that it has become in such a short period of time. In addition to our remarkable students who we are celebrating throughout the ceremony, first, it is about the incredible faculty and staff of GAN Academy. Each and every one of these people Each and every one of these people has had a deep and profound impact on the GAN experiences of our students. I want to ask all current and former GAN faculty and staff members to stand for a round of applause, please. Thank you. Second, it is about our superb lay leaders and volunteers. Our later, lay leaders and volunteers, including our Board of Trustees, our GAN Parent Association, our campaign volunteers, and so many of the other volunteers and lay people who contribute so much of their time and energy to the success of our school, they're second to none. Can I ask all board members, all GPA members, all others who volunteer for GAR and over the course of the year to stand for a round of applause as well. And third, it is a result of the incredible leadership and vision provided by Rabbi Mark Baker and his senior leadership team. Applause, please. <laughs> it has been my honor and a privilege to have worked with all of you. And my exhortation to everyone is do not take all of this for granted. It's truly special. So I'd like to close with a few personal remarks. This is my third and final year as president of the Board of Trustees. My father passed away 38 years ago. I was 17 at the time, younger than many of you. There's nothing like an academy for us as kids. I know that if he and my mom were still around, they would have wanted nothing more for, than for us to have an experience like being students again. It's been incredible and incredibly powerful for me to see each of our children Sarah with the class of 2013, Paul with the class of 2016, and today Josh with the class of 2018, <laughs> embark on their own GAN journeys. To see them emerge and become young adults with complete Jewish toolkits that GAN gives them to go out into the broader world as a gift beyond measure. On behalf of my wife Barbara and I, we would like to thank everyone who has GAN, made GAN the singular and remarkable institution that it is, and for enabling our family to become a part of the special community. <laughs> to the class of 2018, we know that you are ready to leave this building and leave your mark on the world. You join over 1,100 proud new Jew GAN alumni, and we can't wait to see where you go next. On behalf of the GAN Board of Trustees, I want to thank all of you for being a part of the GAN community and for supporting our continued growth and evolution as a school. Thank you and Mazel Tov. I now have the pleasure of welcoming Ayelet Panolis from the class of 2012, who brings us alumni greetings. Hello, class of 2018. It is so wonderful to be here with you today for this milestone. When I graduated from GAN, I had only the vaguest ideas about what I might end up doing after college. And yet, when I reflect on what I do today, it's easy for me to draw a line back to my experience at GAN and who I was as a graduating senior. I work at a nonprofit that prevents homelessness, and I advocate for people who are being evicted from their homes. A few months ago, I was, as I was walking through downtown Boston, I was stopped by a man asking passers-by for spare change. I only had a 20, and the man asked if I'd be willing to break it down in order to give him smaller change, and I said, sure. As we walked over to some shops on Washington Street, I asked him about his housing situation, because that's what I do. 
He told me his name is Robert, and he is currently living on the street. I broke the 20, gave him $5, and we talked about some housing resources. At the end of our conversation, Robert said to me, you are the only one today who acted like I was a person. Now, around the time that I met Robert, I was also reading a novel by China Mievo called The City and the City. It's about an alternate world in which two cities share physical space, but not social space. One block will have a mix of buildings from both cities, but the people from each city are trained from a young age, only to see the buildings, parks, and people of their own city, and to unsee everything from the other city. When first reading the novel, I thought, cool idea, but couldn't happen in reality. And then I thought about Robert, who spends most of the day going unseen and unacknowledged. Many of us are trained from a young age to unsee homeless people on the street, to unhear their requests for money, to avoid eye contact with them, and turn our faces away if necessary. We share the same space, but we only see or pretend to see our city. And it's not just the homeless population that we unsee. Many of us unsee where our garbage goes once it's collected from the curb and taken away. Those of us who do not have mobility-related disabilities often unsee the ways in which buildings, sidewalks, and train stations are inaccessible and difficult to navigate. We unhear uncomfortable conversations and comments in social settings. One thing Gan taught me when I was a student here was how to stop unseeing. Not only that, but how to have deeper sight than I had before. Gan taught me how to confront the uncomfortable and how to grapple with the nuances of a complex and difficult world. And one thing Rabbi Baker in particular taught me was how to transform this discomfort into empathy and compassion. Gan also teaches how to see things we had never seen before. How to read and interpret an Emily Dickinson poem in a new way. How to see the physical world around us transform through our understanding of atomic theory. How to radically reimagine our relationship to prayer. In college, on gap years, working and beyond, you will have so many more opportunities to continue the process of seeing the unseen, of discovering ideas, cities, and people new because you have never been exposed to them before or because you never realized you had been unseeing them your whole life. My advice and blessing to you, GAN class of 2018, is to put yourself in situations that will allow you to see more. Get to know the area beyond your campus or beyond the neighborhood. Go to a lecture when you think you might disagree with the speaker politically. Discover what you don't yet know about. Seeing yourself and the world in a new way is the first step to making the world a different place. Bahat Slechab. I will now invite first Claire Meskin to give reflections in English, and then Stav Keshet to give reflections in Hebrew. An English translation of the Hebrew speech is included in your commencement book. Coming into high school, we were warned by movies like The Breakfast Club, Mean Girls, and High School Musical about cliques, bullying, and the occasional dance sequence. But instead of walking down the hallway in slow motion, we got a school that broke away from most high school cliches. We got GAN. We supported each other and stood together. We never had a football team, and our teachers cared and listened to us. I was wondering why there are so many high school cliches why it feels like 50% of movies and TV shows are placed in high schools. I suspect it has to do with high school playing such an important part in shaping who we are. Our four years here have impacted us. I like to look at it as building blocks. In the building blocks of our personality, meaning the different experiences that have shaped who we are, GAN will always be there. And when you look back on your high school career, this is what you're going to look back on, this school and this class. These four years have changed us all. We've had our own personal experiences, but we've also collectively had memorable moments. 
Remember that time, freshman year, when we were all forced to go to Project Adventure? Feeling so scared and uncomfortable and then making friends on the bus ride home will always be a memory I hold on and look back happily. And four years later, at the beginning of senior year, instead of riding on a school bus full of nerves, we all sang our hearts out at the bonfire during the retreat, from scary bus rides to singing around bonfires. Or remember the time we were kidnapped by on freshman Chabaton by the Ozos and sworn into the red team? At the time, I didn't fully understand what was happening or what it meant, but I feel like we have proudly represented the red team in all its glory. And with the red team, we never actually won color war, but I think we got pretty close. <laughs> and though we hold on to these fun memories, we can never forget dealing with the tests, papers, and hard work. During these stressful times, we would share our Quizlet links, make flashcards together, and try to calm each other down. Though these times weren't fun, they showed the support we have for each other. We bonded through the anxiety and stress of high school, and it made us closer. All those years of color war, all those tests we freaked out about, and all the amazing Chabotones we had, they're a part of who we are. We are fun, we are spirited, and we are supportive. And I feel lucky to have a building block full of you guys. But high school could have been traumatic. The college process alone is. In high school, you're trying to find your identity while at the same time you're subject to relentless assessment from your teachers, your peers, and yourself. Coming into ninth grade, you're a work in progress, and people still criticize you. It can be tempting to act as though you're a finished product. This can make people fall into one of the well-known tribes of high school, the jock, the golden child, the activist. But Gan found a way to make these assessments helpful instead of hurtful. Students are valued here. We're given the space to be a work in progress, and we're encouraged to give each other and ourselves the same space. Feeling like a hot mess on the inside while still being respected and cheered on by your teachers creates a nurturing environment for growth. And look at our growth today. There are two blessings that come to my mind when thinking about this day. One is the prayer Shekhyanu, which is said on a special or new occasion. I always thought you say this prayer when something new occurs, but I only recently realized it's more than that. It's a prayer of gratitude, about being thankful for getting to a new point. And this blessing feels very applicable to this moment. I'm extremely thankful for everyone who has helped our grade get to this moment of graduation. And being thankful also means looking back on all the crazy and amazing experiences we've had together. But while graduation is about appreciating the moments that lead up to the new, it's also about the new itself. The other prayer is a blessing we say before the Shema. There is a line in which we thank God for making every day a new day. A new day brings new opportunities and new experiences to be had. The new is a little scary, since a lot of the time new means unknown. But one thing I do know is that with all Gan has shown us, we're ready to take on the new day that the prayer speaks of. Graduation is a strange day. We're trying to hold on to two very different feelings, looking forward and also looking back. I think that together, the two prayers I mentioned represent our relationship with Gan. Like the Shema prayer indicates, we're ready and excited for this new day. But like the Shekhyanu emphasizes, we will always appreciate the moments leading up to it. Congratulations to the class of 2018. <laughs> Janusz Kolczak Amal. Shnota Yalduchelanu and Shnota Chaim Behemet. Al Shuma Velama Omrimanu Lechakot. Gen Lomechake. Kshani Mistakelet Lechor, Alat Kufashalanu began academy. The Hoshevet or Kola Markivim, Shemafianim at a Kela Shigadal Nuba. Hat Hushashem Maletoti, Yakarat Toda. Animakira Bekach, Shashum the Varmi Mashkibanu began, Ulom Van Melav. Gen Academy היא קהילה קטנה, אבל זה לא מובן מאליו שלכל אדם בקהילה הקטנה הזו יהיה אכפת מאיתנו. בין אם זה אחד המורים, תלמיד שנמצא איתך בכיתה ורואה שאתה מתקשה, או אחד העובדים בקפיטריה. לכולם אכפת ממך. כך, בלי לדעת אפילו, אינטראקציות יומיומיות בגן מלמדות אותנו טוב לב ואכפתיות. הן נותנות לנו מודל להשראה לסוג האנשים שנרצה להיות. 
בית ספר גן אקדמי הוא כמו מדינה, ולא בגלל שיש לנו הנהלה וחוקים, אלא בגלל שיש לנו תרבות שמייחדת אותנו. כשאנחנו נמצאים בבית הספר, אנחנו מנותקים מהנורמות של שאר העולם ונמצאים בנורמות שלנו. כולנו יודעים, בלי שאף אחד ילמד אותנו, מהם הנורמות האלה. איך אנחנו יודעים? כמו במעגל, התלמידים מלמדים את המורים, והמורים את התלמידים. כל אחד מאיתנו הוא חתיכה קטנה בפאזל אחד גדול, שמרכיב קהילה שאין כמוה. לכל אחד יש תפקיד, בין אם הוא תלמיד, מורה, הורה או חבר צוות. אחד הדברים שגן תמיד שואל אותנו זה מי תהיו. כשאנחנו נשאלים מי נהיה, לא באמת מצפים מאיתנו לתשובה. מצפים שנדע איך להגיע לשם, למקום הנכון בפאזל, לתפקיד שלנו בתמונה הגדולה, ושנדע מה חווינו בדרך. בגן יש חשיבות עצומה לדרך. כיוון שבדרך אנחנו לומדים באמת על עצמנו ועל הסביבה שלנו. בזכות החינוך שקיבלנו, הבנו מה זה אומר להיות חלק מקהילה יהודית, שבה להיות יהודי זה לא אומר לחשוב על דת בצורה אחת. לין שוסטרמן, אחת ממייסדות תגלית, אמרה, קהילה יהודית מגוונת שמקבלת בידיים פתוחות את כל מי שרוצה להוביל אורח חיים יהודי, תהיה קהילה, תהיה קהילה יהודית חזקה יותר. לדורות הבאים. שוסטרמן צדקה, התקופה שלנו בגן הפכה אותנו לקהילה חזקה יותר בזכות מילת המפתח, פלורליזם. ללמוד בגן זה להבין שזה לא מספיק לדעת ולקבל שקיימים אנשים שחושבים בצורה שונה ממך או חיים באורח חיים שונה ממך, אלא זה לדעת שאנחנו לא יכולים להפריד את עצמנו ממי ששונה מאיתנו. אנחנו חייבים לתקשר איתם. ולחיות זה לצד זה. בכל יום למדנו על עצמנו ועל הזהות שלנו, והבנו שיש לנו את הכוח להגדיר את היהדות שלנו בכל דרך שנרצה. גן הראה לנו שיש כל כך הרבה דרכים להיות יהודים, שיש לנו את העצמאות לחקור את הדת שלנו, ושאנחנו לא צריכים לתת לאף אחד אחר להגדיר מי אנחנו ומה המשמעות של היהדות בשבילנו. בגן ערכי הפלורליזם תמיד הלכו יד ביד עם החינוך המאתגר שקיבלנו. כל אחד מאיתנו עבר מסע ייחודי, מסע שעזר לנו לענות על שאלות מהותיות שעזרו לנו לבנות את הזהות שלנו לפני שנצטרך לצאת לעולם ולהיות עצמאיים. אני רוצה לספר לכם על המסע שלי ואיך הוא עזר לי להבין את עצמי. כשהגעתי לגן לא ראיתי את עצמי בתור מישהי שיכולה להנהיג. לא חלמתי שאוכל לעמוד מול קהל שלם של אנשים ולדבר בביטחון. אבל ככל שביליתי יותר זמן בגן, היו לי יותר הזדמנויות לחקור ולגלות דברים על עצמי. מה מעניין אותי? מה אני רוצה ללמוד? ראיתי קהילה של תלמידים שהיו מלאים ברצון לפעול, גם כשלא ביקשו מהם, בעיקר כשלא ביקשו מהם. אני ושאר חבריי לכיתה הבנו שהקול שלנו אומר משהו, וקיבלנו את הכלים להוביל קהילה שאכפת לנו ממנה. מי שלא מכיר את הקהילה הייחודית שלנו, כנראה יפקפק בהצהרה שכל תלמיד בבית הספר שלנו מנהיג, אבל אני אתעקש. בגן, אנחנו מגדירים מחדש את המילה הנהגה. לכל אחד מאיתנו היה מישהו שעזר לו להבין איזה מנהיג הוא רוצה להיות, ואיזה דרך הוא צריך לפרוץ כדי להגיע לשם. זה כמעט כמו אפקט הפרפר. לכל כך הרבה אנשים יש השפעה על חיינו כשהם מכינים אותנו לעתיד, וכשאנחנו מגלים את הדרך שנכונה לנו, אנחנו יוצאים לעולם ומשפיעים על חיי אנשים אחרים. לפני שנצא מקטלי בית הספר, ביום האחרון שיש לנו בתור תלמידי תיכון, אני לא רוצה לחשוב על העבר או על העתיד. אני רוצה שנתמקד ברגע הזה וברגשות שלנו, ונזכור שאנחנו מרגישים כך כי למדנו משהו בגן. קיבלנו חינוך משמעותי. אני רוצה שנסתכל סביבנו ונזכור לפחות כמה מראות ולפחות כמה צלילים. אני רוצה שנזכור כמה כולנו שונים, אבל גם דומים. אני רוצה שיום אחד כולנו נזכור לאיזה בני אדם הפכנו להיות בזכות גן אקדמי. We invite Jason Breyer and Shelly Edry to present the senior class gift.
Through the amazing generosity of our parents, the class of 2018 is honored to continue the tradition of the senior class gift. The senior class gift is a philanthropic opportunity for the graduating class to leave a legacy for future students while honoring their experience at Gann Academy. It is a chance to say thank you for four wonderful years. The class of 2018 is proud to leave a legacy of community in our shared sacred space on campus, providing a new sound and projection system for the Beit Midrash. The Beit Midrash is a special place for our community to gather, grow, and bond. This new system will allow everyone's voices to be heard, to interact more effectively, and will impact every person in the GAN community. A special thank you goes to the parent co-chairs of this campaign, Arlene Breyer and Alana Edry. Your dedication to GAN and to the class of 2018 is remarkable, and we are all deeply appreciative of your efforts. It is our hope that this gift will be a point of pride for the school, and we know that this gift is something we will take pride in seeing when we return to visit as alumni. Thank, Thank you, you to, to the, the class, class of 2018, 2018 parents and grandparents. Thank, Thank you, Gan. Gan. Please welcome Shenanigans for a musical performance. Good morning, my name is Sam Zisk. Shenanigans are delighted to be singing Landslide by Stevie Nicks for you this morning to honor this moment of transition for our graduating class. Our soloist is Nessa Goldhurst Brown and the trio will be performed by Gilat Balin and myself. Thank you and please enjoy. Took my love and I took it down. I climbed a mountain and I turned around, and I saw my reflection in the snow covered hills where the landslide brought me down. Oh, mirror. What is love? Can the child within my heart rise above? Can I sail through the changing ocean tides? Can I handle the seasons of my Yeah. 
hills where the lands had brought me down, down. And if you see my reflection in the Please welcome Rabbi Baker. <clears throat> it's not fair to have to follow that. <laughs> Dear friends, class of 2018, this weekend was my 25th high school reunion. 25 years since I concluded a life-changing high school experience that expanded my mind and opened my heart. Some of you have heard me say that I've dedicated my career to high school education, at least in part, to vicariously relive my experience. So, my dear students, to the degree that I never actually left high school the first time, we're graduating together today. In just a few minutes, we will leave behind 333 Forest Street and many aspects of organic experience. Yet we'll take with us all we've learned, what we've accomplished, what we've failed to accomplish, memories we've made, and the relationships we've built. With Gan in our hearts and minds, we'll step out into the world and begin the next stage of our journeys. One of the things that's unique about Gan's beautiful campus is that you not only walk through the front doors, you walk under the archway in front of our school, an edifice that we've walked through hundreds, maybe thousands of times over the course of our Gan experience. I don't know about you, but I rarely pause to notice that archway, let alone to contemplate its meaning and significance. So today, I want to unpack the symbolic power of our archway and explore its meaning for our school, our mission, and our lives. For those of you who might not be familiar with it or might not have noticed the archway before, I brought this incredibly thoughtful gift that I received last week from the school. It is a replica of the archway, way in, way out, that I will take with me wherever I go. So let me start with the plain meaning, the pshat, which I derive from the biblical quote on the archway that you see when you enter the school, from Proverbs 1, verses 2 and 3. Ladat chachma u musar, la havin imre bina, la kachat musar haskel, tzedek u mishpat u sharim. To know wisdom and instruction, to understand insightful discussion, to receive instruction in reasoning, justice, judgment, and fair play. This choice of text tells you a lot about the education that our founders hoped would happen inside these walls. Ladat chokma, lahavin bina. What does it mean to know? And what's the relationship between knowledge and wisdom? Why so many different terms for what we might broadly just call learning? 
The very distinction between terms like knowing, wisdom, and understanding illustrates that learning is multi-layered and complex. Knowledge means more than memorizing facts and figures so you can regurgitate them. To know something, in the words of Pirke Avot, is to turn it and turn it until you've wrapped your head around it and you own it. This kind of knowledge means that questions are more important than answers, and the best answers always invite more questions. In pursuit of wisdom, knowledge is necessary but not sufficient. We want our learning to go further and deeper. Bina, insight or understanding, comes when we seek the meaning behind the knowledge. How and why do I know this? What is its meaning and purpose? How does it connect to the rest of what I think I know? To grow in wisdom, we also need to better understand ourselves as learners through reflection and self-examination. Everything, including our very ways of knowing, becomes a text to be unpacked. Only then do we gain deeper insight into the knowledge we've acquired and into ourselves. And as instructed by the proverb, we don't stop there. The intellectual life alone is never the ultimate aim of education. As the Talmud teaches, we value learning for learning's sake, but ultimately we strive for learning that leads to action. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding must translate into good judgment, fair play, justice, and righteousness. Graduates, you've lived this out every time you've challenged yourselves and your teachers asking, why do we need to know this? What are the implications for ourselves and our world? Alongside AP classes and varsity sports, you have volunteered and given back. You've studied midot, character traits, and you've learned that your character is formed through bahira points, choice points, large and small. You've worked to improve your judgment. You've pursued justice and righteousness. You understand that even more important than the knowledge and skills you've gained over these past four years is how you will use them to make our world a better place. The proverb on our archway teaches us that great education seamlessly integrates knowledge and wisdom, learning and action. It is a message to all who enter this place. And that's just on the way in. So let's go one step deeper. The archway itself is a powerful metaphor. It's a crossroads, a marker of both entry and exit, a liminal space between our school and the world, between in here and out there. This too tells us something about our vision of education, which is beautifully conveyed by the quote that you only see on your way out from Proverbs 1.20. Chachmot b'chutz tarona, barachovot titain kola. Let wisdom sing out in the streets and raise its voice in the public square. Our Jewish educational mission neither begins nor ends inside the four walls of a school building. Our students are formed and informed by their families, their communities, and the society in which they grow up. Our students, in turn, will help form, inform, and perhaps transform all of them. Their learning, growth, and development are in service to the future of our Jewish community, American society, and the world of which they are a part and for which they are responsible. Graduates, you are part of an interconnected whole which you have the power to influence, God willing, for the good. I know you're ready to engage with the world because I've watched you do so over these past four years in and out of the classroom with guest speakers, on exploration weeks and Israel experiences through clubs, civic activism, and more. For many of us, 
myself included, leaving high school brings with it sadness and loss. But the truth is, we knew from the time our journey began that walking in and walking out are both part of the journey. Beginning and ending, coming and going, doing the work in here so we can make a contribution out there. All are essential to a great education and a full life. So when we walk through the archway today, let's think of ourselves not as leaving Gan behind, but rather as completing the circle and fulfilling our educational mission. As the archway teaches, the power of your GAN education will continue through the impact you have on the world and what you do with the rest of your lives. But let me take this metaphor just one level deeper. In his commentary on the opening of the Torah portion, Shoftim, where we're commanded to put guardians Shoftim and Shotrim at the gates of our cities, the Hasidic master known as the Sfat Emet comments on the word gates with just two extraordinary words. Share Deliba, gates of the heart. In classic mystical fashion, the Sfat Emet teaches us that the Torah is not describing a physical gate in a geographic place, Instead, the gate, and I would say the archway, is a metaphor for the openings of the heart, which the Torah teaches need attention and care. Shoftim v'shotrim. We need to keep watch and pay attention to the gates of our hearts because they are the crossroads between what's out there and what's in here. What does this tell us about a GAN education? When we walk through that archway, it's as if to say, you're not just entering a school. You are embarking on an inward journey, an exploration of self. This school is built on the conviction that great education goes even further than the integration of head and hand. Education is avodat halev the work of the heart. Whether we like it or not, what goes on for us in here will affect the people and the world around us through how we act, work, learn, live, and how we lead. Listen to how powerfully Parker Palmer conveys this. He writes, a leader is a person who has an unusual degree of power to project on other people his or her shadow, his or her light, who must take special responsibility for what's going on inside him or herself, lest the act of leadership create more harm than good. Graduates, I know you understand this because I've seen you create spaces that are hospitable to the heart, where you have explored, been, and become your authentic selves. You've done this through your writing, your sharing, your singing. You've created these spaces on Shabbatonim, around the campfire, in morning minions. You've had the courage to be vulnerable and to share who you are with one another. I know this kind of learning doesn't happen for all of us and certainly not all the time. Sometimes it comes with heartbreak, with disappointment and frustration with the world, with each other, with our teachers, our parents, our school, even ourselves. But even those experiences and the resiliency you gain from them are essential to the journey of learning and growth. Your teachers, by the way, our extraordinary faculty and staff understand this and strive to live it out. They see you as people and they bring their full selves to work every day. They know that to grow as professionals, you have to be growing as a person and they do so in community with one another and with you. Imagine 
faculty and staff studying Musar, the Jewish ethical and spiritual tradition, making themselves vulnerable and going on this journey of human development together with you. This is why they are the finest teachers, mentors, colleagues, and friends that any of us could ask for. My dear students, you are about to go out into a world that is in desperate need of your heads, your hands, and your hearts. For the heart is also the birthplace of the activism and civic engagement that have been so central to your legacy at GAN. In the words of contemporary author Terry Tempest Williams, the human heart is the first home of democracy. It is where we embrace our questions. Can we be equitable? Can we be generous? Can we listen with our whole beings, not just our minds, and offer our attention rather than our opinions? And do we have enough resolve in our hearts to act courageously, relentlessly, without ever giving up, trusting our fellow citizens to join with us in our determined pursuit of a living democracy? Over these past four years, you have embraced questions and exhibited resolve. Think of Heifers for Israel, Conservative Club, Femininges. Think of your walkouts and your counter-protests. Think of your Ma'avar plays, your memoirs, your student voices. At some point during these past four years, each of you has wrestled with questions of the heart, listened and offered your attention, acted courageously, joined with others in some determined pursuit. Share de Liba, watching and nurturing the gates of the heart. This is what it will take from all of us to heal our democracy and our world and to build a brighter future. This is the message of our archway and of our school. I want to thank you, class of 2018, along with all of my students and colleagues, our parents, this incredible GAN community. For me, these past 12 years have been incredibly meaningful avodat halev work of the heart. Leading this school has been a significant part of my personal, spiritual, Jewish, and human journey. Gan is leaving a profound mark on my heart, as I hope it is yours. Graduates, I bless you with the courage and the humility to stay on your paths of learning and growth and to keep doing the sacred work of heart leadership. And what a blessing it is for me that I get to walk through that archway for my last time together with all of you. I love you. We'll miss you. Mazal tov. begin awarding diplomas to the class of 2018. We're joined by Frank Litwin, Board President, Matt Conti, Dean of the Class of 2018, Cindy Jacobs, Dean of Students, and Frank Tipton, Assistant Head of School. Jacob Vincent Abisso. Eden Ruth Abbottbull. Uri Applebaum.
Gilat Hadassa Balin. Adam Benjamin Backlachuk. Eliana Rachel Bazer. Noam Kobe Benjamin. Alyssa Pearl Block. Noam Yitzhak Bornstein. Jason Hirsch Breyer. Ilan David Cohen. Jordan Evan Syker. Cole Ezra Davis. Jacob David Davudgala. Maya Esther Dianim. Ilana Gabrielle Daiken. Shelly Edry. Noah Isaac Ente. Giselle Mindy Fellman. Jessica Sarah Friedman. Ilan Svi Gans. Avi Philip Gold. Nessa Goldhirsch Brown. Aton Parrots Siegel Green. Kayla Brooke Handler. <laughs> Elliot Samuel Kahn. <laughs> Zachary Michael Katz. <laughs> Roe Hanina Keshet. Stav Ruth Keshet. Noah Crispin. Bradley Lawrence Lampert. Rachel Julia Lang. Maya Beck Levison. Benjamin Joseph Lieberman. Josh Lewis Litwin. Libby Devora Mail. Shana Mail. Jenna Rachel Margolis. Hadas Yosifa Maroon. Clara Rebecca Meskin. Mia Natanya Milowich.
Maya Mukadi. Eliezer Moses Pearl. Melanie Lauren Rosenblum. Marissa Lauren Rosenzweig. Maya Tamar Rubin. Noah McGee Savitz. Benjamin Samuel Schneider. Layla Deutsch Shapiro. Zachary Noah Shane. Benjamin Nathan Scheuer. Rachel Zipora Silverstein. Benjamin Elijah Silverstone. Devorah Hannah Berlin Simon. Shira Winnick Small. Danielle Smoliar. Benjamin Raphael Sokol. Norman Howard Tall. Seth Devin Turk. Leanna Tess Ugent. David Joseph Unopsky. Kava Widom. Sarah Beth Wilner. Sarah Lauren Wynn. Jacob Julian Wolf. And Samuel Dylan Zisk. Congratulations, class of 2018. The benediction will now be delivered by Noah Ente. In the time of Rabbi Nachman of Bratslav, a butcher in a nearby village gave him a beautiful chair. The Rebbe loved it deeply and sat in it for all his days. One night, Nachman dreamt that he was flying through the sky in his chair, headed for Jerusalem. But as he approached, Reb Nachman's dream ended, placing him amongst generations of Jews who longed to reach the holy city, but were unable to do so. When the Rebbe died, his students preserved the chair in their shul, and until World War II swept Europe, the chair remained peacefully next to the ark. As the Nazis drew closer, the descendants of Rabbi Nachman's followers wished to escape, 
but knew that they could not leave the chair behind. However, it was far too large for one person to take with them. So they carefully cut up the chair and each took a piece. Just before fleeing Bratislav, the group promised that following the war, they would find each other in Jerusalem. There, they said, they would put the chair back together. By some miracle, each person who carried a piece of the chair was able to escape Europe and made their way to Eretz Israel. They fulfilled their mission and in Jerusalem reassembled the special chair to the splendor of Rabbi Nachman's days. Today, in Jerusalem's Bratislav Synagogue, the chair sits in its rightful place next to the ark. This story serves as a potent reminder that nothing significant can be achieved without a community. Just as the student's descendants could not have given the responsibility of carrying the chair to one person, at GAN, we have learned that the responsibility of carrying on our holy Jewish tradition and values cannot fall upon individuals. It is the work of an engaged, dedicated community. And community is everyone. No preference was given to any particular person. Each was given the honor and responsibility of carrying on their own peace. Pluralism, perhaps the central tenet of Gan Academy, has been a challenging factor in the creation of our community here. But as I look forward, it may be our biggest asset. We have learned that in this community, everyone counts and everyone has an equal responsibility for preserving it. We came from communities before GAN, and we will surely find and create new ones in the years ahead. But in the future of the Jewish people, the perspective gained from being immersed in a true pluralistic community will be invaluable in solving today's most pressing issues. After today, when we move on to new experiences, we will each take with us our piece of the chair we created as a class. I hope that when the opportunity arises for us to come together, whether it be for reunions or other life cycle events, that each one of you will remember. You are not superfluous. You are not extra. You are not unwanted. Everyone has brought something to our class over the past four years that has been indispensable to creating this unique community. Each of you are truly needed because we are all essential to making our chair whole once again. However, the chair is not only made whole when we all gather in the same space. We have the power to create this wholeness anytime by looking to each other to help with the heavy lifting in our lives. After today, we will start the paths of 67 new distinct journeys. Along the way, we will each surely face obstacles, challenges, and difficult times. But these journeys will also prepare us to be able to aid each other when we need it most. My wish for the class of 2018 is that when any of us needs help, guidance, or simply a friend, that we will not hesitate to call upon one another. I hope that just as the descendants of Rabbi Nachman's followers promise to rebuild the chair, that we will promise to rebuild and uplift our classmates. For when we feel and act as if we are responsible for each other, our chair, our community, and our lives will once again feel whole. Before I officially present our graduating class, I want to acknowledge two groups of people without whom our graduates would not be standing here today. You are surrounded on both sides by our faculty and staff who have surrounded and loved you and supported you for these past four years. Let's acknowledge them and all they've done for you.
and behind you, as they have been on this entire journey, are your parents, grandparents, family members who've been behind you for the past 18 years. I'm going to ask you all to rise, parents and students, and for the students to face their parents and family members. I invite parents, grandparents, and others to open to the last page of the graduation booklet where you will find the priestly blessing. And I invite you to join me in reciting the priestly blessing over our children. Yevarechecha Adonai v'yishmerecha Ya'er Adonai panav elecha v'yichunecha Yisa Adonai panav elecha v'yasem lecha shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his face to you and grant you peace. You may be seated. Please join us for a reception following the commencement upstairs in the dining hall. In just a moment, our students will recess down the hallway to the main building and up into the dining hall. As is our custom here again, faculty and staff will process out and line either side of the hallway to congratulate the students. We just ask that family and friends please remain in the gym until the students have passed through the faculty and staff reception line, and then we'll all reunite together and with the graduates at the reception in the dining hall. Students, you may move your tassels. I now present, I now present the Gann Academy Class of 2018. Mazel tov to all. <laughs>